All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Raw Intuition Inside Scoop. Today, we have an incredible guest for you. It is Dr. Stephanie Peacock, and she is one of my favorite plant-based, holistic doctors out there because she talks about some of my favorite topics, which is, of course, plant-based nutrition, but also toxicology and environmental toxins and these sorts of things that are so important in maintaining you know, long-term health. So I love that she talks about that and she brings that all together in her practice. And I'm just going to read you a quick little bio here of, of Dr. Stephanie. Uh, she is the founder of her plant-based practice located in Orange County, California. Her primary focus is working with patients with chronic gut issues specifically SIBO, CIFO, and mast cell activation syndrome. She's also a certified environmental toxin expert. Dr. Steph started her journey through her collegiate and professional swim career, where she won multiple national titles, U.S. Open titles, and finished as the 2016 U.S. Olympic team alternate. From there, she attained her doctorate degree and then worked at True North Health Center, one of my favorite places, uh, where she medically supervised water fasting patients. She utilized a whole food plant-based diet, lifestyle changes, and supporting the body's natural ability to detoxify and heal as the foundation of her practice. Dr. Steph passionately believes in the body's innate healing mechanisms, and by removing any barriers, this can restore optimal health. So I'm going to put all of Dr. Stephanie's uh, links and resources down below, so I definitely recommend everybody check that out. But uh, yeah, Dr. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for reading that and for just having me on your show. I know we've been in contact about getting together to do some sort of collaboration because we just agree and vibe on so many things. Sorry, my cat will be making a little bit of an appearance here and there. <laughs> oh, so I hope that's okay. That's cats um, are all welcome. We got cats oh, here. Good. Too. All animals are welcome here, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, but thank you so, so much for having me. Like you said, like we, like, that's one of your favorite topics. I know it's something we're in contact with a lot about environmental chemicals and, um, yeah. how people just don't realize. And it's, it makes sense why they don't, because it's not talked about enough about what's in the products we use and how it can really create this barrier to healing. So I'm excited to dive into that and more things about gut health with you today. So thank you for having me. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so I guess, can we just start off with maybe a little bit more about your background and kind of how you got into like a holistic uh, mindset, what got you into a plant-based diet, and is that what led you towards um, wanting to become a chiropractor, or, or what led you to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my story, it starts out with kind of how you mentioned that I was um, I was a swimmer for 16 years, and I traveled the world. I was on the U.S. national team. I met an amazing group of just doctors and practitioners, and um, it really exposed me to a lot of different types of practitioners. And one of the, I would always get injured. I would always, you know, just from all the hard training that I was doing. And at the time I actually wasn't plant-based. I've been plant-based now seven years, literally. I became plant-based right after I retired from swimming, which is kind of funny. I wish I was plant-based during my swim career. Cause I feel like that would have been a big game changer for sure. Yeah. But <laughs> so, but I'm plant-based now, so it's okay. But, um, but, you know, I met so many wonderful doctors and practitioners and I, the impact that they had on me, like different chiropractors and naturopathic doctors um, was huge and tremendous. And it's what really brought me to feeling like I could excel within my swim career. Uh, just because, you know, as a elite athlete, like we're training so many hours a week, you know, having to really prioritize rest and taking care of our bodies. And so I wanted to be able to have that influence on other people. And so I decided to go to chiropractic school, um, which was four years of doctorate school right after I retired from swimming. And it was actually within school that I discovered it was a year into school, actually, that I discovered a plant based diet. I just happened to come across some research and I was started talking about it with a friend at school who I didn't realize was vegan at the time. And we just started talking about it. I couldn't believe the amount of research and all this data to back up how important eating plants is for our longevity and health. And I also couldn't believe it wasn't talked about in the curriculum that I was uh, in at school and most medical curriculums. And I was completely sold on it. And that's really what brought me to True North Health Center. So um, I started researching like different centers I could 
get immersed into after I graduated, because I really wanted to just surround myself with like-minded doctors that were into just lifestyle factors as healing. Right. And so I discovered True North Health Center, did an internship there, and then ended up getting hired about a week into my internship by Dr. Goldhammer, who's the founder of True North Health Center. And then my, so my husband and I, when I graduated, we just moved up to Northern California and Santa Rosa, where it's located. And I worked there for a year, supervising water fasting patients, learning about the body's innate healing mechanisms, um, detoxification, all the amazing things. So um, that's kind of what really brought me into just like slowly, but surely just learning about different things and how we can heal our bodies, not just through diet, but other lifestyle factors as well. And then um, I moved back to Southern California two years ago um, to start my plant-based practice here in Orange County and uh, just center it around gut health and all things uh, just focusing on lifestyle factors as the center of being able to heal. Wow. That's cool. Um, yeah. So did you, did you know, um, you know, did you have any experience or, or knowledge about water fasting before you went to true North? No, really? <laughs> no, I just, just for my, as soon as I learned about it, I would start watching YouTube videos and things about Dr. Goldhammer talking about it. And I was like, this is fascinating. And with the thing with true North health center for the viewers that might not be aware of it, it's a world renowned water fasting center. So people are coming in from all over the world to come fast at the center because it's the largest in the world and, uh, and it's medically supervised. So there are other water fasting centers located around the world, but not medically supervised because the reason why it's important is because we're fasting patients anywhere from three to 40 days. We do 40 days at the longest. Um, very, very important to be medically supervised during this time, but it's just, it was absolutely just fascinating, mind blowing, and just the amazing, uh, healing that I was able to witness while I was there was just astounding. So had, it was just the best experience of my life. And I actually do incorporate fasting as a part of my treatment plans. I'm not for every patient, but some patients that I see, um, it will end up being something that we do like a remote five day water fast or something mm. like that, just to really tap into the body's healing mechanism. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so in your practice, um, what, what kind of patients do you normally see? Is it pretty much, um, specifically gut health or, you know, is there a common trend that you kind of see with your patients? Yeah, I would say the majority of my patients are coming to me with some sort of gut issue. So I will say, so what I center my practice around is restoring gut health. Um, but I, specifically focusing on conditions like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, chronic gut symptoms that just don't seem to go away mm. um, with a lot of my patients. And they, they usually I see patients that I've seen quite a few different practitioners already. Um, and it's so we're I'm really diving into that lifestyle factor piece. And I know we'll probably dial this in later on in our conversation about what it is that I do specifically, but I primarily do see patients with a lot of um, chronic gut issues, um, type two diabetes, because type two diabetes is actually, um, as we know, it's a, ma it's a major uh uh, chronic disease that is a result of not eating properly, not getting enough rest, right? A lot of overstimulation of the nervous system and it slows down gut motility. So a lot of the conditions that I work with are patients that have this impaired gut motility over stressed nervous system that's not allowing their body to properly digest foods, absorb nutrients. Um, and this can result in these overgrowth of bacteria and fungal issues that are within the small intestine. Nice. So can you maybe explain a little bit for people? Because I, I think a lot of people, especially over the last few years, have heard about SIBO. Um, but I know you talk about CFO as well. Um, can yeah. you can you give a little uh, differentiation between the two and, and how that kind of happens? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So SIBO and CFO basically just stand for small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and small intestinal fungal overgrowth. So um, essentially what this is, is so within our gut, like within our GI system, right? When we're like, for example, like when we eat food, you know, our mouth, it goes through our esophagus, our throat goes into the stomach, then goes into the small intestine, then the large intestine before we excrete it out of our system. And the large intestine, right before it reaches the point of excretion, that area is where we house trillions of different types of bacteria and fungi and all these different types of things that are actually wonderful for us, right? We need these um, good bacteria. There's good bacteria and bad bacteria. I like to kind of liken it to like an ecosystem. Mm. It's like a forest, right? There's good that needs to keep the bad in check. That's just kind of how it works within our body. And what can happen through different types of things that occur along our um, health journey or along our life is 
it can cause this bacteria or, fun or um, fungal, the fungi to actually make its way from the large intestine into the small intestine where it, it's basically in a place that it shouldn't be. So when it is in a place it shouldn't be, it's interfering with digestion, it's interfering with nat the natural absorption of things, and then it can cause a variety of different types of issues. So since that back, for example, we'll talk about SIBO. So since that bacteria is in a place it shouldn't be in the small intestine in large numbers, excessive numbers, when people are starting to eat foods, usually it's uh, food triggers these different symptoms because the bacteria is there fermenting the food and then producing a ton of gas. So then people feel bloated, they can get constipation, they can get diarrhea from this, acid reflux is of all the gas that builds up, it causes a backward pressure of acid to make its way back through the esophagus, nausea. Um, and then ultimately, when we've had this fung fungal overgrowth or bacteria overgrowth for a significant period of time, it can lead to something called leaky gut, which I know a lot of mm. your viewers have probably heard of this, but it's essentially where that lining that separates the small intestine from the rest of our body, the blood, will become a little bit permeable, increased uh, permeability. And so we start to absorb more things from our environment, from our foods, and it just triggers food intolerances, triggers more systemic symptoms like joint pain, even skin rashes, autoimmune-like conditions. And so it's it's kind of like tracing it backwards. So, well, why did somebody even get this fungal or bacterial overgrowth in the first place, right? Because it's usually a symptom of something else occurring in the body. So it's figuring out what occurred along that person's life that is just triggering this to occur. Mm. Yeah. Do you do you find that uh, the cause of some of these conditions is it is it mostly diet or you know is it tox you know toxins or a combination? It's usually a combination. Um, so with these overgrowths that occur, there's over 75 risk factors for it. And typically what it is, it's something that has caused it, in, it two things. It's usually something that's caused our gut motility mm. to be slower. So when things are slower, it will just cause the food to essentially sit there longer and ferment, and then it's just allowing for this bacteria overgrowth to occur. Um, or something that causes the gut dysbiosis, which is again, that imbalance in like good and bad bacteria that reside in the colon that will cause more inflammation. So whatever can trigger those. So like you said, like diet is a big one for sure. Somebody eating tons of processed foods, sugars, animal products that we know are high in saturated fat that we know now contribute to leaky gut and get gut dysbiosis. Um, anything that can cause that impaired gut motility. So like I mentioned, type two diabetes, I work with a lot of patients with type two diabetes because again, we know that um, having diabetes can actually slow down your gut motility, but some other conditions that can also cause it are even like concussions to be a big root cause actually that can mm. actually slow down gut motility. Um, if somebody's just having issues with having like enzymes getting secreted at the correct times during digestion can also cause a little bit of an issue there. Um, but, and then I get that environmental toxin exposure. So um, it could be mold exposure potentially that will tr uh, contribute to this. Um, it could be just years and years of being drinking out of well water which we know is high in arsenic and different types of bacteria that can, that's ingesting different bacteria. Um, food poisoning can also be a big contributor as well, because that's again, bacteria coming inside us. It's a, actually the number one cause of having like a bacteria overgrowth as well. So um, yeah, I kind of have, I have this list in my head when I'm working with people and I'm just kind of checking it off as we go, but we always start with those lifestyle factors first, because that's going to be the big, big piece in changing the diet, changing, retraining the nervous system, working on those different areas are super, super key to long lasting healing. Wow. Yeah. So do you think, I mean, are the, I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of your, your posts on, on social media. Um, do you think people are often misdiagnosed or, or mistreated when it comes to some of these issues and, and how so? I do. I, I think, so the reason I believe this too is because, um, so irritable bowel syndrome, IBS is a very, very, very common diagnosed condition because it's, it's pretty much a diagnosis of exclusion. So it's, we've tested, we've done all these endoscopies, colonoscopies, stool tests. There's nothing wrong with you. So you have bloating, you have constipation and you have abdominal pain, you have IBS, um, and just eat low FODMAP and you're on your way. And we know that actually up to 70% of IBS patients actually have SIBO or they have like a fungal overgrowth. Wow. And so I do find that a lot of patients 
have something, there's something underlying that's causing these symptoms. And I always like to liken it to symptoms in our body aren't there to, because our bodies hate us. They're, they're telling us that something's just wrong, something to look further, to look deeper. And just having a diagnosis like IBS and trying to just change your diet with eating lower carbohydrate foods to not cause so many symptoms isn't the answer. It's, it's just something that might cause a decrease in those symptoms, right? But again, it's those symptoms are telling us something is wrong. So I, I really do find that there's something missing when someone comes to me and they're like, yes, I have IBS, I have all these symptoms. So I'm looking to those bacteria overgrowth. I'm looking to fungal overgrowth. I'm looking to, again, like an impaired vagus nerve. Mm. Like if somebody's just had a lot of stress, that's decreasing that gut motility because the vagus nerve starts in our brain and works its way down all the way to our digestion. And if that nerve is not functioning right, and we're in this constant sympathetic state, we're not getting a release of bile from the gallbladder to digest fats, absorb nutrients. We're not getting a release of pancreatic enzymes. Our gut motility slow down. So sometimes if they don't even have, you know, SIBO or SIFO, it could be, they're just very stressed. Maybe they have a very stressful job that they can't get out of. Maybe they're in a stressful relationship, you know, all there's things that it can be easy. Sometimes we look for the big thing. Like, do you have SIBO? Do you have IBS? Do you have SIFO? But it could just be what's in their environment. Are they, you know, just overloaded with a lot of different environmental toxins that, you know, from perfumes they're wearing to the what the type of water they're drinking. And they live in a place with a lot of air pollution that's overstimulating the body, right? Causing it to be stressed too. So mm-hmm. I think I try to look at both sides. I'm like, what could be underlying? But then again, what is in the environment that's causing these symptoms to arise too? Yeah, I love that because I, I it, when I coach people, that is one of the most overlooked things I think that they tell me, you know, they never think about um, a lot of the, the somewhat, you know, seemingly smaller things that aren't, I don't think are actually smaller things, like you said, like the stressful job or relationship or the perfumes they're wearing. So, um, so what would you say are like a few practical tips for anybody that is maybe thinking they're, you know, experiencing some of these issues. Um, do you have any specific, uh, like tips for helping somebody kind of detoxify their environment or their lifestyle? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first, the first and foremost tip that I always give is to anybody is we have to reduce the stress on the body. Even if you think you're not stressed, your body probably is stressed from something that's occurring, right? Like whether it like subconsciously we're, we are, our world is a very stressed out world because we have tons of, there's so much stuff on the news. Now there's, you know, everyone's in a sympathetic state going from point A to point B, just constantly like not taking the time to slow down, um, not taking the time to just sit with yourself, sit with your thoughts, just kind of detox a little detox your brain from what's going on in our environment constantly. And so our bodies cannot heal if we're in a sympathetic state. It just cannot because when we're in that sympathetic overdrive, and I know, you know, this very well, is our liver, our liver, which is our biggest detoxing organ is not going to be able to detoxify if we're in that sympathetic overdrive. And we've been talking a lot about these environmental chemicals. And that's why we have the amazing bodies. We do, we have different detox organs and pathways to take what's coming, what we come into contact with to naturally get it out of the system so that our bodies can thrive. But when we're in these, this stressed out state, when we're in this, like, you know, tox, you know, unfortunately our world has become a little bit more toxic with different products and things like that. Um, it slowly accumulates over time in our bodies, and then it can block our body's ability to detoxify them out because we're just constantly getting exposed, exposed, we're constantly in stress. So the first thing to do is really to take time for yourself, give yourself some me time, maybe do some breath work, some meditation, things that calm you down, specific vagus nerve exercises. Maybe it's even going to get a massage, go, go walk on the beach, go do some grounding in a forest, anything just to calm your system down, because that will allow your liver to detoxify, to unclog that pathway that is not allowing it to fully get rid of whatever it is you're coming into contact with, whether it's stress or chemicals or processed foods, things like that. Um, And then also it supports your gut healing, supports your mind, everything. So I would say the first thing is get into that parasympathetic state when you can, even if it's starting with five minutes a day, better than nothing. It really is. Um, I always say, start with that. The second thing is, as I always say, let's start with um, 
adding in nutrients. I never like to look at it as let's look at what we can take away, but let's look at what we can add in because that's what we want. We want that abundance of nutrients. And we know now nutrients from plant foods, the variety of plant foods that you can get in support your different detox pathways. They support your different liver detoxification phases. They support your gut's motility. They, they feed your good gut bacteria, which we know produce short chain fatty acids that fight inflammation. So I say, let's first detox the brain by working on some nervous system work. And then let's add in some beautiful nutrients. Uh, it just from, even if it's adding in like two to three new vegetables a week, that is amazing. So let's go there. Um, and then the third piece to it is uh, looking to the environment. And I usually like to start with, um, I, I, you know, I know these are kind of like bigger ones. So, so, you know, it's easy to switch out like laundry detergents or, you know, maybe some personal care products, but I like to look to what are you exposing yourself to the most every day? So we drink water, you know, ho hopefully half our body weight in ounces of water a day. So what are you drinking your water out of? like hopefully glass or stainless steel, not plastics, because we know plastics have different chemicals that can cause issues with the gut and detox pathways. Um, but, you know, what are you drinking your water out of? What are, you, what are you filtering your water with? So I look to water filtration and air filtration because we breathe 11,000 liters of air a day. So mm. what we do to maybe filter the air in our home and filter our water. Those are kind of the two biggest ones I really will look to first, um, just to see what we can do, depending on where the person lives, what they're currently what their water filtration system is. Um, and that's kind of where I'll go from there. Wow. Yeah. I am completely on the same page with you on all of that. That is awesome. Uh, so, um, do you, ha do you have a personal favorite type of water that you drink? Like, do you drink distilled water or spring water? Or yeah, any sp I, I love, I love distilled water. I really do. I actually use reverse osmosis water, okay. um, just because of the area that we live in. Um, so, um, I, so when it comes to water filtration, because I know you're a big fan of distilled water, correct? Yeah. 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 I, 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 uh, True North Health Center, they also use distilled water too, which I loved. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I find, depending on the area that somebody lives, I'll look at, I'll actually look at the person's water quality report mm. and just kind of see what's going to depend to kind of identify maybe what filtration system will be best. And I usually find that reverse osmosis or distilled water are really the two that I kind of will go between um, uh, in terms of uh, recommendations for sure. But um, for us, we actually use reverse osmosis to filter out our water. Cool. Yeah, those yeah. are, that's, yeah, that's what I would say as well. I mean, it's, yeah, yes. I, I think people just, that that's also one of the things I've noticed is people are still, which kind of is crazy to me that people still don't understand how many different toxins are in the water. Um, and so, yeah, that's like one of the first things I try and get people to understand and, and change. So um, I'm just curious, I know you said you switched over to a plant-based diet kind of after your swimming career. Um, did you experience any, uh, like any certain healing or, or specific benefits from that yourself? Yes, absolutely. I did. So it, you know, I always, I never considered myself like a very anxious person or, but I, when I think back to it, when I was eating animal products, I think I was in a very hyper-stimulated nervous system state mm. and I didn't realize it. Um, when I started to eat more plant-based, my, I felt like I became calmer. I felt less inflamed. I can actually look at photos of myself and I look puffier in photos than versus now. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, in the, and I want to touch on that anxiety piece and that hyper stimulation piece right now, because I, and I heard this on a podcast once and I thought it was brilliant. So, you know, not to bring in this animal cruelty side to it, but we know that, you know, when animals are, they're, they're stuck in these cages, they're stuck in whatever they're stuck in, right? They're scared, they're anxious, they're, there's a lot of fear going on. And, and, and we absorb that when we eat that product, right? And, yeah. and I, I truly believe that when you get rid of that, you, you open up so much ability to heal in your system I, from so many reasons from eating more plant foods. But from that specific piece, I just noticed decreasing the inflammatory like saturated fats that are found in animal products um the high protein content like methionine and choline that we know in excess that are found in animal products cause a lot of inflammation in our system um just decreasing whatever it is that they're exposed to the fear the anxiety the the bacteria um all the things that they're exposed to that would get into the 
the meats and the products that we would eat, things that might have mold on it, things that um, whatever their environment is. And it's just so much more. And so I, I really did. I noticed a huge, within a couple of weeks, I noticed this big weight lifted off my shoulders. Like I felt, I felt clean. Like, mm. I don't know how else to say it. I just felt cleaned out. I, I felt like much more calmer. I felt um, just way less inflammation. I also noticed such a big improvement in recovery with just like my exercise. Like I felt good when I woke up in the morning. I felt like I had sustained energy throughout the day. I used to feel like I'd have this big crash in the middle of the day. Um, so very, so, so many benefits I noticed with it. And another reason why I know just as you are so passionate about spreading the word of just add, at least adding more plants in because it, yeah. the feeling, how good you feel, it's like you, you wouldn't want to change it for anything. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm talking to myself. That's like everything, <laughs> everything I experienced as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is great because it shows that, you know, it's, it's not like a one off thing. You know, I think this and I hear this from so many people, it's very similar stories of just the just everything changes and and just yeah. the, how you see the world changes and just, yeah, it's incredible. So mm -hmm. um so yeah, what uh, if if somebody was interested in working with you? Uh, do you do only like in your local area, or do you do telework or, or telehealth or anything like that? Thank you, thank you for asking. So yes, I actually do. I so I actually only work virtually, even with all my patients that are locally here. Um, I'm strictly virtual. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just easier because so I can work with a variety of people and see people back to back. So I'm able to fit in more patients throughout the day. Sure. Um, but yeah. So I, but I also work with patients outside of the state of California as a consultant. So I have my license within the state of California. Um, but I do work as a gut health consultant for patients outside of the state of California. I can't be prescribing all kinds of different things for them, like supplements and things like that, but mm -hmm. I can help them get to the root of what's occurring with them and then help them get on that path to um, healing. Uh, with their gut, with um, things like that. And I, I, of course, when it comes to the the toxins, when it comes to the nutrition piece, that part, I'm 100%. I do um, home walkthroughs, like virtual home walkthroughs with patients cool. to really go through. And those will take between two to three hours, just looking at their products, fil water filtration, air filtration, um, uh, just a, a furniture, all, all kinds of things that we know can emit different chemicals and volatile organic compounds and things that can contribute to disrupting our health. So I do work with patients all over and you can find me at my website, uh, stephaniepeacock.com. So I have um, like, that's where you can look for consults. Um, I have really great information there too. I like to talk, I talk more about like SIBO, SIBO environmental chemicals on my website. Uh, and then also I have a newsletter that you can sign up for as well, where I um, I took a couple months off of sending out the newsletter, but I'm getting back on it now. I will be sending a weekly newsletter again. And then on my um, Instagram and TikTok is where I'm most um, active talking about all this stuff. So it's just Dr. Steph Peacock is where you can find me there too. Very cool. Yeah, I highly recommend everybody go check out Dr. Peacock's, uh, especially Instagram. That's where I've seen most of you. I actually just started watching your YouTube channel as well. So uh, oh, it's... Good. Yeah, I definitely hope people will go subscribe and, and grow your channel and get, yeah, because wow. I, I really think you have uh, an amazing, um, you know, an amazing way to promote and to educate people and you're great at it. And yeah, so I just hope that uh, more people will find out about you and learn all the great information you're teaching. So thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for joining the channel today. It was a pleasure to, to meet you and to learn more about you and, and all the things that you're doing. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for your kind words. I really, really appreciate it. And it was so fun chatting with you and getting to talk about all things plant-based, nervous system, toxins, and all that type of stuff. And I know we'll probably be having a chat diving more into the toxicology side of things in the future, which will be really fun. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Yeah, everybody, Dr. Stephanie is going to be on the Raw Intuition Health Show coming up in, uh, I can't remember the exact date, but it's in a, it's in a, a future episode. So definitely yeah. stay tuned for that. It's going to be a great show. Um, and yeah, again, go check out the resources. They're all going to be in the description box down below. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. And I hope you really enjoyed this episode as much as I did. And we will catch you in the next video. Always follow your raw intuition.